Welcome back to Just Blazer Programming, ladies and gentlemen. And today we are at the cusp of greatness. We are at 997 subs. I have to thank all of you for it. But we need those three people to press the subscribe button. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you do, I will shave this off and look a lot more younger than I was, you know, during this video. Anyways, we're gonna be discussing identity server and some misconceptions that I may have put out into the world and some alternatives to it. So we're gonna discuss that in full detail. So in my last video, I went over how to use Identity Server 4 in your Blazor WebAssembly projects, but unfortunately, it's not gonna last. As you know, Duende is actually the people who made Identity Server in case you didn't know. And Identity Server 4 is about to lose support. Yes, unfortunately, the open source program that we've all grown in love for a very long time now and got, you know, basically used to it being free, will no longer be absolutely free anymore, will no longer be open source, which is very sad. And if you don't believe me, let's go to the next slide. As you can see here, this is the old Identity Server 4 site, which uh, they rebranded to Duende. That's their license, that's their new brand now. And they say here, as of October 1st, 2020, they started a new company, Duende Identity Server. And you know, you have, you could use the Identity Server 6, which is the newest Identity Server project for, you know, testing. And if you make less than a million USD for yourselves or as a company or whatever it is, and there are licenses you could use in case you have other needs for it, which I'll get into a little bit later. But for now, just know that Identity Server 4 will be uh, maintained only up until November 2022. And that is, and then after that, you probably should think of a different, uh, either start uh, building up to Identity Server 6 or you might need to look for an alternative, which I'll also get into later on in this video. But I wanna go over the licensing thing first, just to get rid of any misconceptions out there. So right here, Identity Server 4 rebranded to Duende. So in Duende, if you wanna use it, you can, and that's the thing that actually comes with the Blazor WebAssembly, in case you didn't know. If you build a Blazor WebAssembly project right now with uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, then you will have this installed automatically. So, if you, uh, you know, basically we use the individual account uh, stuff, uh, like I went through in a different video, I might have it here. So if you want to check that out, you can. If not, don't worry about it. Let's continue. Community edition is what we want when we want to test. And basically, if you are somebody who is just building your own project or you have your own corporation for yourself, you are able to use a community edition without any issues until you make about a million USD. And I think by then, maybe owning the license for that support and stuff is probably, you know, you know, you shouldn't really worry too much about it. You're probably in the green, you know what I mean? And if you're a nonprofit, you're good, charity, whatever. But basically for us, for the majority of people here, if you are a freelancer, you're probably SOL on this one because that does not count you. But if you're someone building your own project, then that's fine. And if you need to build projects for somebody else, you might need to either have them get, get you the standard license or a redistribution license instead. So again, if let's say I want to build a web application for like myself, for my like just Blazor programming page, I'm fine until I make a million dollars. And then I'm not so fine, I got to start paying. But you know, by then, do I really care? Anyways, you know. This is what the redistribution license looks like. And this is how much you're gonna be paying for the starter pack, 5,000 USD for five clients, AK if you wanna redistribute this as a software, or if you are freelancing, you need this license. Or if you are, what do you call it? If you are freelancing, you have to get your client to have the starter edition for themselves in order for you to actually give them the ability to use the software without incurring any penalties or you know any licensing issues, legal legalities, all that good stuff. So that is what your future looks like if you feel like using Identity Server 6. So I do like the fact that at the very minimum, there's a really big chasm between you having to pay for it if you're doing it by yourself. But I don't like the fact that if you're a freelancer or a contractor or something like that, and you're working for a third party, one of you needs to have some license. Either you have to bite the bullet and get the redistribution license, or they have to bite the bullet and get this license instead. That's just how it is. And that's how it's gonna be after November, 2022, if you want to keep using Identity Server 6. And I think Identity Server 6 is a really good product. More on that later. But let's say you don't wanna do that. Let's say you don't wanna deal with uh, Identity Server 6 and any possible licensing issues that might come about, or you just don't feel like, you know, maybe you think you're gonna make that million dollar product and you just wanna be very, very cheap. So we're gonna to look towards authentication alternatives. So the first place I would go to if I were you 
is the awesome blazer repo here which has actually a bunch of them but unfortunately these two here i believe use identity server 4 and this one is based off of this one so they're both identity server 4 so you might want to leave this in fact my last video was about this one in case you want to look at it before november 2022 apart from that you have other authentication models here um not this one not this one unfortunately these are identity server 4 these ones here but this one you can use this is open id so it's a different model and i have not tried these other ones but i know that azure ad i'm going to go into these actually and auth zero are other ways you can implement this without using identity server uh identity server six with the duende stuff so let's look at some alternatives here of what we can do without uh, identity server six so what are the main alternatives for it well the first one Probably going to be this open ID core. I believe that is the same one that's going to be used here. So it's based off of this. And basically it is free open source. It has the, I think MIT license or has the Apache 2.0 license. It's, it's, that's fine. And with this, you will be able to do authentication with it. The only issue is that because it is open source, um, support is a bit kind of, you know, you're, you're reliant on GitHub basically for this, for it to work. And also it doesn't have any of the nice bells and whistles that identity server uh, six has, you know, it already had a lot of UI stuff for you built in and it really worked pretty well with the .NET framework. And here you have to go out of your way to do some customized code in order for this to work. It's kind of a little bit of, it's more work and then you get less for it, unfortunately, but it is a way around using identity server six because you will have an authentic, uh, actual working authentication and authorization piece here. The other thing you can do is go into Azure Active Directory, and this will actually supply you with a lot of the things that any servers, you know, would, would have done. The only thing about this is that there is a 50,000 monthly active user limit where you have to start paying. So there is a caveat here. It does, however, support multi-factor authentication. Uh, authentication. I don't think open IDIC did it. No, it doesn't. This one does not have multi-factor. This one does. And it has, you know, the nice bells and whistles, like your UI for logging in and it has other stuff here. And, you know, it is in the Azure, it is in the Azure technology realm. So when you do use this, you're kind of stuck using Microsoft and you have to rely on the Microsoft server for your, uh, for any hosting. So keep that in mind if you want to decide to use this um, i don't believe linux is going to be an option if you're going to go down that path and use amazon cloud or something the next thing is key cloak now i have not actually tried this myself but it looks like it has a lot of features you have sso you have you know identity brokerage um user federation and you have some bells and whistles here it is supported interesting that's by red hat but apparently this will work for you and it's also free I believe the only thing it doesn't have is it's not as customizable because it's like a third party thing, but it looks like a strong alternative to identity server six. If you want to try that out, I have not tried any of these out by the way. And if I were to try one of them out, I maybe go to Azure only because I, if I were to build a Microsoft product, I would probably go into the Azure cloud anyway. So this wouldn't make too much of a difference to me, but Let's just ask ourselves this question, whether or not identity server six is worth, you know, kicking out of our lives. Like, yes, the license is steep, but you do have the community edition that gets you a, a lot of work out of it without paying for it. It gets you up to a, at least until a million dollars. And by the time you make a million dollars, is five thousand dollars really much to you uh, per year is fifteen hundred dollars per year if you're going to do the starter edition stuff. I, I don't think so. And you get to keep all the, the support and you have something that has been historically there for you for the longest amount of time for other Microsoft products. This is not just a Blazor thing. This is also a .NET thing. So I don't know if, um, if this is, I'll put it this way. If you're a freelancer, you have the most here to think about because you do not get the luxury of not having to pay the price until $1 million of uh, usd gross in your corporation or whatever you actually have to get the redistribution pricing license here 
So if you're making something that requires you to give this to, the, to a client, you need yourself this license or they need the standard license in order for, for this to work without incurring any legal problems. So maybe you are the one that stands most to benefit from switching up to, let's say, Azure Active, Key Cloud, or Open Edict if you feel like doing the work here. The thing that I will say that there's other alternatives here as well, some that use Auth0 instead. I have not tried any of these out, and I really do feel like trying them out, but I'm going to leave that to you guys. Which one do you think is the most interesting here? I personally believe that the Azure Active Directory is probably the most interesting, but I can see why Key Cloak would be cool too. But personally, because the way I work, at least, uh, either the client would probably afford the license. So this wouldn't be a problem if they're making that much money or you're not making that much money at all. And this is for a personal thing. So you're going to be within the community edition guidelines. Like for me, myself, if I were to build Blazor products now, I would probably still be using Identity Server 6, especially if I'm doing like a course or something, because it's just for me and I'm not really redistributing the software. It's just for teaching purposes. So I would be fine and dandy without it but if you have let's say a client that you have to give this light the uh, give the software to then you, you have a lot to think about well i believe the next best alternative is probably azure active only because it's within the microsoft family of technology i know there are some caveats when you use this especially the restriction that now you are actually married to azure and you have no way around it but it does give you a lot more flexibility because now you can actually integrate this with other applications outside of it. If you choose to have multiple different applications that you want a user to be able to log in with the same credentials or something like that. Uh, apart from everything else, if you are a tinkerer, maybe you want to look into open ID. If you are one of these people who really likes to bash your head against the wall, this could work for you. And I don't know anything about Keycloak, unfortunately. It looks like it's pretty good. It looks, it looks like a kind of like an Okta. I don't know if you know what Okta is, but it kind of looks like that to me. Um, Okta was pretty popular. And this looks like a free version of that. I'm not sure what the licensing model is here, but I believe it's also, there's no, I don't think there's a, there's a licensee fee. I think you have an option to go into paying for it, but you don't have to. And you'll still get like support and stuff. So... To me, I would probably stick with the, the software. So as much as much crap as I give to Duende, they did make a pretty good product. Identity Server is actually really, really good. And you get a lot for it. And, you know, I'm already used to Identity Server 4 and how it works. So would I want to switch up? Even though uh, most likely if I get 50,000 monthly active users, I would have to pay here anyway. Here I have to do a lot more work and I won't get a lot of stuff done. Like I would have to figure out how to make this work for my project before I actually start building anything. And Keycloak, I just have no idea. Like, I don't know how this is going to work at all. So yeah, I would probably take the easy way out and just go with the community edition. $1,500 is $150 a year, $150 a month more or less. If you're going to go that route. Uh, I think the ones who are going to hurt the most from this is going to be the freelancers for 5,000 USD a year, because yeah, that's a pretty steep price to pay. You're paying 500 bucks a month, basically for a license here. So I hope that you're making more than that in order for you to continue doing your business. Anyways, I wanted to bring this up because my last video was about Daniel Server 4. And I didn't bring up the fact that in November, 2022, we're going to be losing support for it. So you have to start making a decision whether or not you want to go into using the Identity Server 6, which will require you to have that license, the community license or otherwise, and if there are any other alternatives here. So these are some of the few alternatives that you could find, along with some alternatives that you could get in the awesome Blazor repo. If you want me to go into any of these authentication authorization models, let me know which one's your favorite, I guess. And obviously, I work by whatever's the most popular. So if a lot of people decide one thing is something they want to learn, so be it. I'll go look into it and I will build a small little uh, mini tutorial for you if need be. Anyways, that's all there is from me, at least for this video. Thank you very much, everybody. 997 as of the time of this video's recording. So please, if you are those three people and you want to help me cross that threshold into 1000, 1K, then I thank you very much. And I hope that you do press the like and subscribe button. Anyways, peace out.